Hello everyone. This is Ivan. So today I'm going to cover about how to extract data from a website. So there are probably several reasons why you want to extract data from a website. Uh, usually that will be a public data. You should not ever access a private data unless you are an authorized person. Right. So before we start this course, I'd like to have some disclaimer. Right. So this course is about extracting data from a static web page. So this video is solely for educational and the knowledge is widely available on the internet. Do not violate any law, such as a local law, example like stealing the private data, data that inquire you to log in and you do not have the login ID. Do not extract those data. Or you actually while extracting the data, you actually impact the sites, the website, the public site, such as performance, you slow it down. So, the data generally should be available on the public and you should not repeatedly overwhelm the website, the site itself. Right, so you should save the data somewhere else. And read the TOS, that's the term of service. Okay, now we'll move on to the problem statement. Okay. All right. I like to actually collect a list of volunteer organization. Uh, I'm a Vivid volunteer, so I like to actually collect a list of volunteer organization to see that whom I can contact and call out, right, to understand their services. So uh, I actually went to look at this site, this place that is called the uh, NCSS, that is the uh, Singapore Social uh, Service Agency, and they have this list of VWO, that is a Volunteer Welfare Organization. So I'd like to find out uh, the, the uh, site itself. I want to actually collect this uh, list one by one, you see, and look at what they are actually doing it. So I like to actually, for example, look at the Adventist Home for Elders. Uh, but as you can see from this row, there are sort of like more than hundreds of them. Uh, and it is actually kind of a very big task. So I like to actually read it uh, offline. And I want to actually store it in a Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Like something like this where I can actually have the example the the name of the organization and then the URL so something like that I want to store it in there in this spreadsheet and then I can call them at my own time I'll contact them and take a look at those sites right but unfortunately uh, I it does not seem to have anything on it all right so for the first thing is that uh, you can actually download the list of members. So uh, I made a terrible mistake, uh, as in I did not notice this, but you can actually go through this uh, site. It actually has this list, download it. So this is good. Yeah, but my bad is that I forgot to take a look at this. And I actually start to copy one by one uh, each line, alphabet one line at a time and uh, it took me like a few hours and I was getting onto uh, letter B and the bone marrow and I was copying and I was very frustrated and I did not notice this and so uh, out of the frustration I decided to actually hey, why not I just uh, extract the data of this whole thing and then the URL and uh, and then I can actually put it in the Excel spreadsheet in here and 
and then just take a look at the site and my own free time offline so yes right so on the inside I should actually uh, go to here but yeah so I actually uh, wrote a, a script a very simple script to actually just copy the name for this all right and and then it will actually come out with the URL so of course uh, if whenever a site actually offer you an alternative such as a uh, API the application program interface or PDF like this do use them right I so I actually made a mistake but we can take this as an educational and this is how uh, we will talk about in this course how to actually uh, get the names of all these uh, organization the VWOs and the hyperlink itself right so we shall be doing that and you actually save it in the uh, CSV file the Excel spreadsheet all right so uh, so as you know that this uh, generally a, a page is a HTML page so we will just inspect the page all right example that uh, we want to actually take a look as okay alive all right so you see that the page is actually formed by you see this stat name a h r e f in here and then it goes to here and it goes to here so we know that it is a very simple uh, tag uh, referencing a uh, link tag link that will point to the different organization and it will actually have the string of the name so basically we just need to call out the we just need to actually copy the string of the the text of this for example this uh, name Adventist nursing and then we need to copy the uh, href so this is the only two things that we need to copy out we can ignore the rest and then we will actually uh, save them into our uh, CSV file so this is what we will be doing in this uh, video so before we move into the tools I forgot to mention that all right I mentioned just now that we actually need to look at the term and condition the term of service so I uh, was looking for it and the term of service is in here right the QS right so all right so do take note of here make sure that you are not flouting any rules because these are the copyrights example the copyrights so they are owned by NCSS and you shall not reproduce post transmit in other way all right so we should not publish it all right we we should not publish it we should not post it all right so uh, if it's for personal consumption it should be fine because I'm using this to actually find out the sites of the VWO I'm not using it to sell it and this site is already available on the NCSS site so you should you should also not publish this on any sites unless you have the permission of NCSS and you should also not modify the contents right uh, and you should also take note that modifying the contents or using it for any other purposes will be a violation of NCSS copyright and intellectual rights so basically that if we are just using it for calling uh, the VWO because the information on public site it should be relatively safe we should not use it to publish it uh, on our site we should not modify it and sell it as commercial entity and uh, to be on the safer side uh, we should actually example store this information and use it for personal usage such as contacting the organization which this information is already available on the NCSS website
before we go on to scripting in Python, you need to have two tools. One is Python itself. The other one is the editor. That's the IDE. So if you can actually go to python.org slash downloads, so which is in here, python.org or you can actually do a search in Google and search for Python download it will actually point you out to this uh, page so do download the probably the latest Python in here I've got the 3.9.0 you can actually download it right so after download it install it on your machine right so do the default installation and install it on your machine and when you have completed installing Python on your machine you need to download the editor for Python I recommend the PyCharm the PyCharm for the community in here so you can search for PyCharm right P-Y-C-H-A-R-M search for PyCharm download so go for one download and then select the community so the community is free the professional you need to pay it. so click on download and install it so once you install it and then we are almost ready to go I believe that now you have installed Python and the ID PyCharm editor itself for the community so I need you to launch a uh, PyCharm right so once you launch PyCharm you need to create a new project so do create a new project and after creating a new project you will come to something like this page just give it any name right you come to something like this page so this is a empty uh, project a default page for PyCharm uh, do not worry about all, all these things alright so basically uh, in Python we will get around for example let me if you go under far new alright maybe as a Python file you just type something like uh, find VWO something like this alright because that's what I want to find so let's make sure that everything is working well that you have installed correctly so if you type this print hello python All right so this should actually print out uh, hello python All right so if i right click on here and run so you see i right click on here and run and you see hello python so if you see this it means that you have actually installed python correctly but if you have not let me give you another guide all right if you go under pycharm and preferences click under the project all right and then python interpreter so uh, under the interpreter you can see that the uh, interpreter is actually you can select your python version so mine is 3.7 you can select the one that we have installed so once you select it out pycharm will actually connect with the python uh, version itself and it should get you working all right so that's that's it for the configuration for this uh, simple hello world let's delete this off we are going to start on the more serious stuff so before we do the uh, before I want to extract the uh, or extract the data I need a couple of things like the libraries so Python contains hundreds and thousands of different libraries to help us uh, so let me 
extract the uh, install the library itself so the convenient thing is that we do not need to key inside our command prompt or terminal to install the library PyCharm will actually provide that so let's go to the PyCharm preferences again and we go to this uh, you see in here under the project Python interpreter so we are going to add a few things one is request so request is to call the HTTP right that's to call any site request so we install this so we click install package right so we see that the package has been installed successfully and then the next thing we need to install is beautiful soap So we install Beautiful Soap 4. Let's install this. Beautiful Soap 4. And uh, we install this. Right. Okay. Right. So that is actually show that it's installed successfully. And that should get us uh, working what we want. Okay. So. You remember that we actually install two libraries, Beautiful Soap and Request. So let's put this down as Import Request. All right, which is the library that we just installed. And we have actually installed uh, Beautiful Soap 4. You remember, so from BS4, Import Beautiful Soap. All right. And then we want to convert it to a CSV. So Python has actually provided a CSV. Okay. And lastly, because we want to manage the files and all this, uh, so we need to have the uh, OS uh, library. So we import the OS path library. Okay. So these are the four libraries that the dependence library that we need and that's all that we need all right so now we can actually try out and write our very first script to this uh getting all the names off okay now we are going to dirty our hands so let's find out the let's close this and close this all right let's close this too okay so let's go back to the previous page and this is the page that we want to have the data of this all these beautiful names of these uh, VWOs so we need the URL first so the URL and we will put down here URL equals to so this is the URL okay so the page we are going to extract the page is equals to request get URL so you will actually request for this page and let's check out this page if it's working all right let's see uh, whether it's working so if it's working usually when it's working it will return a status code so status code will actually inform us during a request is it successful or not successful so if it's 200, 200, it means that it is successful, right? So we are going to test it out whether the request is successful. So we put down here status page, uh, the status code of it, and we will actually have this page status code. So let's play on this. And see whether it returns a 200 all right so it returns a 200 means that it is successful all right so I'm just curious about what is the content that uh, the request is so I will have something like I want to print it out what is the content so let me see so I print out the content is a uh, print page content right 
So I print the page and the content and let me see. Ah, alright. So it's got all this content. Let's see. So yeah. So you see that some of these uh the VW names are in here. So it's basically like this uh HTML file. If you see the view source, something like this, right? So it's like a very raw format, everything in here uh, that you see, right? Right. So, so we know that it's able to uh to read. So that's good, All right? So that's comment it off, All right? We put an asterisk to comment it off so that we will not see all these uh, lines again. Okay. So now we know that the request is successful. We want to use a beautiful soap. So beautiful soap is where it will help us to extract certain part of the content to make it meaningful for us. For example, I want to extract the uh, I want to extract the data of uh, the text, right? For example, I want to extract data of all these text in here, and beautiful soap will be able to do that for us and I also want to extract the uh, URL so uh, the URL from here so it's up a click the URL from here so it will also extract for us so the request is to request the content of the page the whole page whether it's successful and beautiful soap will help us to break down into meaningful pieces okay so we need to declare it all right so I will declare it uh, beautiful so okay so I declare it. this one is the first line okay so the next one is that uh, I want to check whether uh, is it getting any content or not just to make sure right so all right so I just I can just print out like this I'll list down as a children so I just print main content let's see yeah, so it's working. All right, so we can actually comment this out. All right, so beautiful soap is actually working now. Okay. So you can see that. Uh, okay. In here, remember that. Uh, I show you the tagging for the HTML. So if I go under, uh, right click, inspect. All right. For example, I inspect this. So. Alright, so I inspect this, you notice that all of them are A tagging. So all these are A tagging with the uh, link, the reference link, and then the name itself, the text itself. So I know that I need to find the A tag, but there seems to be a lot of all these A tag around it. So uh, I will just uh, filter off them later on. Right, okay. So let me find out the soap. All right, let me try out. So to find out all the A tag, I find out soap find all A get tags. All right. Let's see what is this. Let's see if there's any result or not. Ah, okay. Alright, so I made a I made a mistake in here. So let me try out this uh in here instead. Okay. Alright. I see what I get. I'm getting at. All right, all right. Let me see. All right. So you see, this is the list that I show. All right, breast cancer foundation. So if I actually put on to a uh, number ninety, something like this. So breast community. So the A tag in here, as you can see, it's got uh probably different names. 
So this is where we want to actually uh, load into it and grab so of the different a tagging, the HTML a tagging. Since we know that number 90 it calls a certain range of uh, tags and maybe like one let me key in like 150 it calls a certain range of tags but we do not know from what range the bottom range to the end range what are the list of data we want so uh, we will need to look at the range the lower end and the upper end and check it out what are the data that we uh, truly want so let us find out right example let me do this uh, set as an index first and then I will do a loop uh, do a loop in here so I'll look through all the a tag and I will actually print out what are the uh, strings uh, this is similar on top here all right so what are the strings all right the strings and then I will just increment the index again all right so I know what is the bottom end of what I want and towards the upper end so I'll just do this Aha, so now I get a list of strings. All right, so now you see. So we do have a list of strings that we want. So uh, not all of them are useful. For example, we know that these are, all these, some of these are not, not really useful from the 37 onwards. So 37 is not what we want. And then uh, you scroll down of it that uh, all right this will scroll down so probably up to 470 so it's something like 37 to 470 so uh, this is where we uh, actually want to make it safe I, let me check again is it 37 Alright, it's one of 38, so it's 38 to 470. So we know that from the range of, we want the data, the index from 38 to 470, that's what we want. Alright. Okay. So let us uh, take the data out. Alright. So, okay. So first of all, we need to actually uh, declare that uh, an array. Okay, so let me try. Alright. Alright, so I use the try method because uh, I do not want it to get out of range. Alright. So if there's a try, then there is a catch. Alright, exception. So we do not want to have a index array boundary. So for here, I will actually set the range. Okay. So the range between 38 to 470. And then I'll find the uh, attributes. Alright. Alright. So that, if it's not equal to top, you notice top, top is not what we want. Alright. So if it's not equals to this top, we will copy it, provided it is between 38 to 470. Alright, so we will actually copy, we'll copy it into a data array. Alright, so I need to actually specify a, a data. Let me specify a data. Alright, so this is a data array. So I will have this. Okay. Okay. And if it's an error, maybe I'll just I'll just print something, right? Just just for my own sake. Okay. And then I will increment the index. 
one, I will shift it to here. Okay, so let's uh run it. Okay, so we do not know whether it is really working or not. Alright, so let's try by uh seeing what is the data the data in this array. Okay. So we print data. Alright. Alright, so there's nothing in the data, so something is wrong that uh, I've actually uh, done uh, incorrectly. So let me check uh, what is wrong. So I've actually append the data, print, alright, I append it, 38, and append it. Ah, I see why. Because I actually save it as data 0. You notice here. So it should be data 0. Let me try. Okay, so that is actually uh, out of range. Ah, alright. Right, I have got to add this. This is something that I forget. It's quite a lot of time that uh, I think many people forget it when they are adding a two-dimension arrays. So you see now, I've actually, let me uh, remark this off. So I actually added is, this is actually to append a two-dimensional array. This is a 2D array because I'm appending the URL. I'm also appending the text in here. So I run this again so you notice that I've got the URL and I got the text so you see I got the URL and I got the text in here so in fact if you want to uh, extract uh, differently we can actually for example we can actually extract it this way all right let me say if I want to extract it it's as an individual, so I can just extract it as this way. Yeah, so this is clearer. So now I'm able to get see this data. So this data has been sorted off nicely. Uh, it skipped the top. Uh, it will remember the top in here. Right. That we saw in here, top in here. Right, because we actually... Uh, Mark it as that we do not want to see the top, right? Yeah. And so it was uh if it doesn't see the top and it's between this range 38 and 470, it will actually append it to the uh, arrays. So now we actually got the array working nicely. Right? The arrays in here. See all of it is uh beautiful. And now we can actually save it as a C uh, CSV. Alright, so the next steps that we want to do is to save into the CSV file because right now we have got all these uh, data that we want. It is fine, but uh, I want it to be in the file so that I can click on it. Okay, so we are going to use the CSV library. If you can see in here, CSV library. So I'm going to use it in here. So first of all, let me name the file. So I will call it a VWO, right, the volunteer organization, welfare organization. So I'll name it the file name as the VWO. So this will save in your uh, project root folder. All right. I need to check whether the file exists or not. So I will actually need to actually use the OS path command in here. The OS path. Right, so I'll check whether the file exists or not. All right, so, uh, so if the file does not exist, I will create it. If the file, uh, exists, I will just write it. All right. So, let me assume that the file does not exist. So if the file does not exist, 
okay I will actually uh, create the CSV file all right so I'll just create the file so this is I will uh, create the file W is the right mode all right and I will create as a CSV file and then this will be the uh, the next one will be where I'll get the something like the bar names and then maybe right so these are actually probably a bit redundant okay we can actually remove it off and then the next line uh, we can actually start writing it in so this is what I will actually write it in alright so this is the same as the above right so uh, but this is this part is for writing it in all right so I will just write it in and then I will need to actually go through the different data in here right to iterate the data and then save it in the CSV all right so I will just uh, go through as all right all right so I'll just go through as the data array and I will just write it all right so let's run so if it's successful we will have this file created vw.csv and it will contain all this data all right okay let's try all right so it finished with exit code zero so let me go and find the file right okay. okay let me see the folder all right so here you is I open up the file and this is what we save all right so we have all this okay so yeah so it's exactly the same as uh, this right so basically, uh, we have actually extract the data out as what is shown on the uh, website, on the site itself. So exactly the same. Uh, right. So this is uh, what I was actually working out for uh, initially, but I actually, my bet was that I actually missed out the top of it and I was actually keen it individually and it took me like more than uh, half a day and I missed out the top and so I actually start writing a script to actually extract it out all right and it became this however for your own sanity sake if you do have easier means such as the API or NCSS has provided the link to download it do use them they will save you lots of time and also prevent the mistake that I have but in this video I hope that you guys have also learned something that how to uh, extract data for your usage this is helpful so just make sure uh, be considerate and be ethical do look at the TOS when you are extracting the data all right that is to be fair to both parties to yourself and to the service providers that actually provide this information and also don't do anything illegal such as looking into private data which you are not allowed to you are not authorized to so this is the end of the video uh, if there's anything do drop me a note uh, I hope that you have learned something I definitely do uh, the code itself uh, will be in the description and I'm sure that uh, this uh, all this uh, script you can actually improve it much better right so you can actually use uh, this knowledge and apply it on other sites okay that's all from me thank you very much all right, Ivan out